Turns out we're pretty good, but... Almost... Almost a little too good? What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. I've missed you guys. It's been a little while since I put out a video. Uh, after the hand belt show, my wife and I went on vacation. We actually were able to go to Italy uh, for a while and kind of hang out and explore around and had an incredible time. So I'm back in the shop now and getting back to work. Um, what I want to mention really quick before we actually start on today's project is the R65. So this bike is coming along nicely. Uh, one thing I did notice is when I was trying to put out new content on this bike every week, it was causing me to kind of rush through the project. And I never got to the point of like cutting corners, but I didn't really get to spend as much time on individual projects as I wanted to. So I'm going to start to slow down just a little bit on the R65 so that I can really, you know, stretch my skill set, learn new things, and make this the coolest, most custom fabricated bike I've ever done. So plenty of content to come on that bike for sure. It's not going anywhere. Uh, I'm just going to slow down a little bit on the progress, and we're going to mix in a bunch of other content uh, in between. So that brings us to what we're working on today. Some of you guys might recognize this bike. So for those of you who are not familiar with this bike, I actually started a restoration on this believe it or not, about two years ago. Uh, we went through, the engine that came with the bike was completely trashed. Somebody had uh, like parked it with no spark plugs for a long time, maybe outside, maybe they pressure washed it, whatever it was, it got a huge amount of rust on the piston rings and just locked them to the cylinder walls. It was complete trash. I got in big trouble with you guys when I took a hammer to that engine. Uh, people got really <laughs> upset by it. So this is a different engine that we put in there that we kind of tested on the engine stand, uh, but it hasn't really run in a bike in many, many years. We went through everything else on the bike, new tires, chain, you know, freshened everything up. I obviously still have to paint the gas tank, which I did get some of this original, I wanna say jade green metallic. I can't remember the color uh, exactly, but we have some of that paint so we can finish this. Unfortunately, the bike's been sitting for like two years now, so we are probably going to have to redo maybe the front brake system for sure, go through the carbs, you know, who knows what else. But my goal is to get this thing fully roadworthy because uh, I actually haven't ever had a CB500 or 550 in this close to stock form. Everything always ends up just being a, a custom build. So I'm excited to ride around a somewhat stock bike for a little while, and then we'll see uh, if I end up selling this or where it, uh, where it goes after we're done with it. But let's get to work. So we're gonna start to go through this thing like we would any other Will It Run video. So I have a jump box kind of set up here. Not, it's not very easy to get a positive on this. We'll see how well that works. So we just want to go through and see, make sure everything turns over, make sure it doesn't let out any magic smoke. So we have a neutral light. We do not have an oil pressure light, which we should. So we might have to look into that. Beam and low beam are working. The left turn signals are super slow and the right ones are fast. All right, let's look through that. I know we don't have a horn. Uh, let me turn it over. Pretty good, but almost, almost a little too good. It's like somewhat concerning as far as uh, if we have a good compression or not. My oil light did come back, so that's nice. Eh, what the heck? Let's spray some carb cleaner down and see what happens. I'm gonna kind of spray this while cranking. We'll go no choke. Throttle seems nice and free still. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> well, this just might 
come back pretty easy. All right. Um, there we go. Turn that headlight off. It started to run a little bit. I mean, let's just go for it. I'm going to pull these carbs off. I know they've got to be dirty on the inside. Cut the carbs off. What a huge pain that is with the uh, factory air box. And I can see that two of these bowls are loose. Like I mentioned, I remember at some point stealing, I believe it was the jet holders. Hopefully not the floats, because I don't know if I have any spare floats, but we'll take a look. They shouldn't be too bad, because again, I don't think I ever really ran this bike. Yeah, there's a little bit of gunk in there, but not bad, and no jet holder. Floats feel a little gummy. But I think we're going to be able to get away with just pulling all the components out, blasting it all out with carb cleaner, resetting all the float heights and everything, make sure all that's good to go. But yeah, they're not terribly dirty at all. Cool, I've shown you guys that a million times, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the rest of these off, clean it all out. I'll bring you guys back if I do run into anything unexpected, but uh, it all looks pretty clean. Everything's cleaning up really nice. I went ahead and let the bowl sit in the ultrasonic cleaner for you know, 10 or 15 minutes to uh, cut through a little bit of that gunk that was at the bottom. They all are uh, perfectly clean now. Okay, this is also the time for my shameless plug. So I have uh, recently come out with this product. These are 304 stainless replacements for the factory jet holders. Uh, so they come in a set of four. I sell them on my site as well as on eBay. I'll throw a link in the description if you guys are uh, in the need for any let me know. I'm going to go ahead and throw everything back together, reset my float height so I know all that's adjusted properly. We'll put this thing back on the bike, uh, hook up my auxiliary fuel tank, see if we can't get this thing to run for a little while. sounding thing but I'm gonna set it to where it will idle for a while and I'm just gonna let this thing run for like five minutes and just work out any uh, kinks it's got uh, it does seem to be firing on all four so it's just better than I expected <laughs>
definitely still got some work to do, but I'm gonna let this place clear out a little bit. It's been a couple of days and we've had some new parts come in. So I have a new battery as well as a brand new petcock. And also I got a master cylinder rebuild kit. I cannot remember if I went through this entire front brake system. Either way, it's a little bit sticky right now. So probably later in this video, maybe in the next video, we're gonna go through all of that. But my main concern right now is the engine. So it does run, it does run on all four, but as you guys saw, I was having some difficulty uh, getting it to idle properly. And even more concerning than that, it started to smoke a decent amount. So that kind of goes along with what I mentioned earlier in the video of I'm not convinced that this engine has good compression. So generally what will happen on these bikes if they sit for a while, those piston rings can actually kind of seize into the ring lands a little bit and not create uh, quite as much compression as they would if they were kind of properly sprung out, so to speak. So how that generally manifests is difficult to get the bike to idle because it's low on power. Uh, smoke coming out of the exhaust, which we saw both of those. And then also if I just kick the bike over with my foot, you can hear a little bit of kind of suction and compression on there, but not quite as much as you would expect. So I'm thinking that's probably our issue. Now we just have to determine what we want to do about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a quick compression test. I've shown you guys how to do this multiple times, but the quick run through, pull the spark plugs out, put the compression tester in, hold the throttle open, turn the engine over for, I don't know, three, five seconds, something like that, to make sure it gets at least a couple of compression cycles in, read the gauge. What I'd love to see is somewhere in the 105, 115, somewhere in that general range, I think is pretty standard for these. What I don't want to see is zero, 30, you know, something super low. I also don't want to see a huge variance across all four. Ideally, they're within, you know, maybe 15% of each other, something like that. So I'm going to run through, check all four. Let's know what we find. Compression test is done and unfortunately my intuition uh, was correct. So cylinder one, 120. Perfect. Cylinder four, 115. I like it. That's when things start to go south. Cylinder three, 85. So I've seen worse, but that's not good. Cylinder two, on the other hand, 25. 25 PSI, um, so that is very bad. So what I'm gonna do next is try to determine where the issue is. So if I put a little bit of oil into the cylinder, redo the compression test, if it immediately jumps up, then it is piston rings. If it doesn't, then it is something else like valve seal, like um, you know, we need to kind of go in there and relap the valve, something like that potentially like a bent valve or something, but it turns over really nicely. So my gut is it's still piston rings. So what do you say we put a couple of drops of oil down number two and number three and see if our numbers jump up? I don't think there's a ton of oil left in my little. Yeah, this thing's not really putting out much oil. So let's see if that made a difference. almost 70 already so that definitely points to piston rings let's see if we have the same effect on number three Let's 
Let's try it. We were at 85 last time. Eighty-five to one hundred and twenty. So we definitely have some stuck piston rings. Let's figure out what we want to do about that. So we have a few options for logical next steps. Some old timers will tell you go out and ride the bike like you stole it. Uh, the idea behind that is the thermal expansion of all of the components when the engine gets really hot. Cylinders get hot. Pistons get hot. Expand a little bit. Uh, that can help break those piston rings free. Have them seat against the cylinder walls. Get your compression back. That's option one. That's not a great fit for us because of the rest of the bike is not quite road worthy yet. Option two, the option I'm going to go with, is good old Marvel Mystery Oil. Anybody who's worked in a garage for any amount of time has heard of this stuff. I haven't used it in this exact scenario before. Where I have used it in the past is to try and free up completely stuck engines. I'll put some of this down in the cylinder, let it sit for like a week or two. Um, truth be told, I've never actually had good results with that. So. TBD on if this is gonna work at all, but I have heard a lot of people use this. So what I'm gonna do is put probably a half ounce, maybe a full ounce in the number two and number three cylinder. I'm gonna let it sit and kind of soak overnight. Tomorrow morning, we will come out here and do another compression test, probably pointless because we're still gonna have the oil that's helping to get that compression numbers up. But I wanna do a compression test to just see what happens also to kind of get any of that excess oil to kind of come out of the cylinder. Uh, then I want to start the bike, let it run. It's probably going to smoke like crazy. Once all that smoke is gone, we'll shut the bike off. That's when we'll do a real compression test to see if this had any real effect. So in the meantime, I'm going to put, I'm guessing about a half ounce. I don't want to go crazy with it uh, in the number two and number three cylinders. And we'll try it tomorrow. We are back. I'm not going to lie to you and say that it's been 24 hours because uh, I got distracted on Friday. It is now Monday, so it's really been closer to like 72 hours. When I shine the light down the spark plug holes, I can no longer see any of that Marvel Mystery Oil on top of the piston, which I think is a good sign because that means it's over the weekend kind of seeped down, ideally soaking into those piston rings, helping to free them up. I'm just going to give it a couple of turns to see if anything comes out and now it's dry as a bone. Obviously there's no compression right now because all of our spark plugs are out. So what I'm gonna do now is I think it's kind of pointless to do a compression test at this point. I think the engine being started and run for a little bit will really help to free those piston rings up if they're not already. So I'm gonna throw the spark plugs back in. We're gonna fire it up. I expect it to smoke a decent amount with the uh, oil that's been kind of soaking into the cylinder walls. Um, I'll set some ventilation up or maybe we'll move it and start it back there uh, just so I can try and keep most of that smoke out of the garage. Then, I don't know, after five or so minutes we'll shut it off, let it cool down, try a second compression test with hopefully better results. Alright, got it all set up by the door. We'll turn the fuel on, we'll go choke on, key on. Again, I expect it to smoke a decent amount which is why we're over here. We're ready.
just like that for... Probably set the idle a little high, maybe 2,000, a little over. I'm gonna let it run for about five minutes. So a little bit of an update. I don't know if you can see the smoke, but uh... results unfortunately um yeah so here's what i'm thinking i there's still a slight chance that the piston ring is just stuck um but what this points more likely towards is maybe a broken piston ring um there's no way to know for sure until i get in there I think that's what we're gonna have to do. I think the top end of this thing is just gonna have to come off. It's not a huge deal. I've shown it on the channel before and I'll bring you guys along uh, for this one as well, but I was hoping to not have to dig into the top end. I don't think we're gonna get that lucky. Marvel Mystery Oil didn't work for this one. So you can also see we started to get some oil dripping out of this little side cover on the top. So what that points me towards is the seals inside of this engine are just tired. So the piston ring is still most likely stuck or broken. And then also all of the O-rings and valve cover gaskets and stuff are probably dry rotted as well. This engine was a bit unknown. Actually, it was very unknown. I'm, truth be told, I don't even remember where it came from. Two years ago, we ran this engine uh, by itself on the engine stand, but for no more than like maybe a minute. So running an engine for a one minute, two years ago, basically means we're starting over from scratch. I was hoping the Marvel and Mystery Oil was gonna be enough to bring it back, but unfortunately this one's a little bit too far gone. So in the next video, you guys will see me tear into the top of this engine. I'm gonna go ahead and get some parts on the way. I'm gonna order a full rebuild, a top end rebuild kit uh, with piston rings, and we're just gonna replace everything while we're in there, get this thing in tip top shape. So I appreciate you guys watching this one as always. Stay tuned to see me uh, continue to dive into this thing and get it fully sorted. I'll see you guys on the next one.